All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to another THP Strength Podcast. Today, we have Daniel Bramble on the podcast. So, Daniel, go ahead, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what your accolades are, and uh, we'll get into asking you some, some questions outside of that. Well, I'm Daniel, um, ex-British long jumper, personal best of 8 minutes 21, uh, just a general jumping freak, really. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. <laughs> And yeah, good to be on here, man. Good to be on here. That's Last awesome. Podcast. So what is your what was your PR in long jump? Eight meters twenty one. I know you guys use um is it feet? Feet and inches? Yeah, yeah, feet and inches. Yeah. Yeah, eight meters twenty one. That put me um and still fifth best long jumper in British history. Which is day. crazy. So yeah. background, I don't know if you know anything about us, because I I mean you followed us loosely, but like what do you know about Isaiah and I? Do you just are you just like what the hell is this? Like these guys dunk for a living like what is this awkward like this obscure sport like what do you think of it is that like a thing properly nah yeah nah, <laughs> probably, wow, man. it's just good to see i like seeing people with similar ability to me but use them in different ways and um, i'll be following you guys for a time and it's, it's it's interesting man it's good it's flipping inspiring as well what you guys are doing yeah. so yeah so i guess we'll we'll give you like a little bit of the background because some of your followers might see this so basically Isaiah and I grew up watching like a ton of basketball. Isaiah ended up seeing a Michael Jordan video and was like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. Like, was it Michael Jordan, Isaiah? Uh, it was mainly Michael. I mean, I was, I like dunking before that. Uh, but it was, I would say it was like mostly just any NBA player dunking. But what made you like want to train to dunk better? Oh, it was seeing Kilgannon. Seeing okay, Kilgannon. okay. Do you know who Jordan yeah. Kilgannon is, Daniel? No, I don't. My so, my um, knowledge is very vague. I know Michael, <laughs> say that. You know Michael Jordan. That's good. That's yeah. that's a good start. So basically, uh, Jordan Kilgannon is the guy with blue hair, the guy that dunks with blue hair. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, see, Isaiah. Isaiah, you got to dye your hair. hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So basically, um, he Isaiah saw him dunk and then was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I want to be able to do that. And uh, then he started training and, and stuff like that. And then eventually got up to what is a 50.5 inch vertical. So he started with me. I think his vertical was like 43 ish, 44, maybe yeah. with a lot of knee pain. And then basically uh, we trained for five ish, four or five years before he hit 50.5. So it's pretty cool. And a lot of the training that we do is very similar to track and field. Cause I don't know if you yeah. know this uh, Daniel, but my background was actually in track beforehand. So do you know, do you know Altus world athletic center? Yeah, yeah, of course. The yeah, so I worked uh, I worked there. Well, I, I interned there under Stu and Dan for f four years. Do you know those guys at all? Um, loosely, only through people. I don't, I've never met either in person, but okay. I've heard a lot. What's, what's, what's your experience with Greg? My experience with Greg, it's been very, very brief. I mean, I've only ever seen him at competition. Um, the last time I had a full conversation with Greg was probably 2015 when I was about to get knocked out of the... Um, heats at the world championships um really so that was interaction with greg but yeah he's a he's a proper cool guy proper down-to-earth sound guy yeah he is I, I really like greg a lot he um when i was there like i would always make an effort to go watch him like long jump quite a bit fab for brie slapier was there too mitchell watts was there mitchell watt was there too at the same time the, the three goats the three goats yeah, three dude, goats. it was it was literally the three of them so it was the three yeah. of them dan paff who's coached donovan bailey and greg uh, Andre de Grasse was there. Um, mm -hmm. Aries Merritt was there. They had Ella Nelson. She was running really well at the time. And I'm trying to think of who else. Curtis Beach was still there. Uh, there was a pole vaulter. Um, Steven, Steve Lewis. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he was there as well. So it was like, it was just crazy the amount of talent that was like in that yeah. very, like, I mean, it, it was crazy for that year or two. And then it kind of obviously like fell apart for the elite guys. But it was so much fun leading into that 2016 games, like getting to watch all those guys train every day was, was a blast. So it's really funny. I was like, I'm sure that we have some mutual like friends and stuff like that. Um, so do you, I actually have a question for you. Do you know any of the high jumpers that train with like, is it UK athletics or what is it technically? Um, British athletics now, but um, not too many. We kind of overlap, like all the jumps are one of those sports that kind of overlap at some point. So they either use our sandpit or we use their like high jump bed. Um, but I've never really linked up with any like recently anyway. Okay. Who was, who was the best high jumper that you ever, that you like 
I guess got to either watch or talk to or like know personally? Probably Robbie Grabarts. Mm. Yeah, just Rabars. disgustingly freakish human. Like he he made me look like an average. I used to pride myself on my hops, and he would come along and just be like, "Man, was he was he good off two feet as well, or just one?" Mainly two feet, yeah. Like his standing long jump was crazy. All of his plyometrics were just crazy. And I just used to look at that and just be like, okay, this is where the bar is. And this is where I have to <laughs> try and push it to because it's That's pretty sweet. Um, it's interesting to hear it like from your lens as a uh, as a track guy, you know what I mean? Like, because Isaiah mm-hmm. doesn't really know too much about like, I mean, Isaiah, do you know anything about like the metrics that a lot of track guys use? Like standing long um, jumps, triple jump or anything like that? No, nah, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Daniel, what is like? What was your standing long jump in meters? So my standing long jump was uh, two fifty seven. Two meters fifty seven. Really? Um, I thought I thought it would have been a lot further than that. To be honest, I thought it would have been a lot further than that too. It's still unfinished business as well. It makes me want to. <laughs> so Isaiah, that's like two fifty seven is like I don't know, like nine feet or something like that, around roughly something like that. All oh, right. So yeah. for perspective, Isaiah Jay Clark like backflipped like eleven feet or something like that. He backflip. Yeah. He backflip. No, it was it was like ten feet. He backflip, standing long jumped like ten feet or something. Have you ever seen that video? Yeah. I, I do you know? Like do you know Jonathan Clark at all? Do you know anything about him? I don't actually. He was a triple Sounds- jumper that he converted to dunking, but he was a triple jumper that jumped. I think like, I think his PR was like sixteen eighty or something like that. So he was like solid. But now he's yeah, now he's like a pro dunker and like is doing crazy events. He he went. He went to All Star Weekend last weekend, and uh, we got to got to see him, and he was so he was he was doing so well. Um, so it's it's actually really interesting that you say that your standing long jump was that. What was your standing triple jump? Oh, I've got it somewhere. I'll have to dig out the. I've got a video of it somewhere, and I remember right. I shocked a few people with it. Okay, um, so what? So you would say, generally speaking, that you were super elastic. Like as soon as you had a couple steps, you would you would just yeah, fly. Exactly. Anything with a little bit of a load, I'd pop straight back out of it regardless okay so what were your metrics that you would say were like freaky compared to everyone else like like if you were like oh during testing like these are the things that i would crush people in um so probably single leg hops from um the 30 meter board really yeah so single leg hops both sides like Um, repeat were they repeat or was it just like yeah five hops five hops and jump and we measure it at um measure it from where you started to where you landed um and, and as many as you could as big as you could i can't remember okay. the distance of my research before um, so you would but, you would do as few it was like as few hops as possible or was it timed um as few hops as possible to make it into the pit okay i think my okay. distance was around 14 meters so it was from the 13 meter board but i did five and in a lot of people doing six and in which was kind of like so five and in was a big did you ever did you ever try triple jump or no? I really wanted to dabble. I won't lie. Um, I got talked out. Imagine I got talked out of it by most of my um, my teammates at the time. So oh, you don't need to worry about triple jump. Just stick to the long jump. But I think it's because <laughs> they they knew if I if I turned my hand to it, I would have been um, all right. Here. So I kind of just stuck to what I knew. But um, do you think you would have been better at triple jump than long jump? Based on my elasticity, I think so. That's um, I would have crazy. a lot of work with my left leg because I always said my left leg is just there to make me look normal. Like all my power was in my right leg. But if I worked on my left leg, yeah, I could have I could have done something. I jumped 15 meters 80 off eight strides. That is wild. That is, what is that? Is that over 50 feet? I think. Yeah. Let me, I got to get my phone out for the metrics because yeah. I, don't, I don't know exactly what they are. <laughs> Let me see. Wait, so it's 15, 1587. Yeah. Is that what you said? 1587. So what is that? You divide uh it's meters and I want it in feet. So I gotta do so if, oh man, this is gonna be really difficult. 1587 divided by 2.54. Okay, so 624 inches divided by 12. Yeah, that's 52 feet. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. So you literally and then, and- never did it, Isaiah, for perspective. 50. Do you know what triple jump marks are, Isaiah? Yeah, I've triple jumped like one time before. What was your triple jump PR? Uh, forty feet. Forty feet. He went fifty-two. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> and it's funny because I got another, um, it was at a GB international competition. Um, world what was it? 
can't remember the name of the competition now. Um, but yeah, the triple jumper had like fallen out, um, just bailed out of the competition. And I got a knock on the door saying, do you want to kind of do triple jump? And I was like, mm, I should ask my coach, blah, blah, blah. And I said, nah, let me just do it. And yeah, that came of it. My first GB international best in triple jump. And yeah, didn't do too, that I did better is, than a lot. That's I actually actually crazy do you think was there anyone like that you competed with that was able to like double in those like that that could like i mean will clay i think he mm. he can correct yeah and I think who else? In, Christian wait, Taylor wait, probably could <laughs> me and ben talked about dab dabbling we wanted to be the first person over 17 and the first person over eight meters that was our little pack at the time he'd already gone over 17 i'd already gone over eight meters and we just had to switch um oh that is that that's so cool. cool okay yeah. so now we'll get into like some of the stuff the nitty-gritty that a lot of the people will definitely be wondering about so tell us like uh, to my knowledge didn't you start in parkour isn't that where you started so that's where i mainly picked up the springs but i started before then like way before um Shout out to my parents, but basically, <laughs> you you picked good parents. I was, yeah, I was left <laughs> for a lot of my childhood, <laughs> so I was jumping up and down in the doorway, and I think that, that was probably accidentally the key to my springs. Like I would cry if I got taken out of this baby bouncer, so I just love jumping up and down from uh -huh. early. You know, it it's funny. Just... A lot of a lot of parents will say that that stuff's really bad, and mm. uh, like they'll say like, "Oh, they need to like learn how to do that without the assistance and stuff." But for you, you're yeah. like, no, I, I think that like, that was what made me successful. <laughs> yeah, for real, because I, I used to just jump as high as I could. And I thought, if I, if I can do this and this, it must be possible outside of it. And I just always had that mentality and obsession of being like able to defy gravity. And I just thought, how far can I take this? Right. Like, how so what yeah. was, when did you start doing long jump and when did you start doing parkour? So I started doing long jump probably rough when I was about eight or nine um that started from a taekwondo weirdly but um yeah I started about eight or nine then once parkour kind of picked up when I was around 16 17 I dabbled with that and I wanted that to be my life route at one point I wanted to be a full-on parkour guy how but, how um, good were you at parkour like were you nasty I was I was right actually I, I just used to do the big jumps I used to do a couple flips and a couple cool stuff but I was mainly the you know gaps like if there was a building here you would gap like, like you would gap building to building yeah yeah standing with run-ups total disregard for my safety I don't, looking back at some of the videos now there's some dusty videos on them deep down in youtube somewhere of me jumping around um, wait where you know, can i find these videos where are these at oh gosh oh no oh no yeah you can actually um let me you see need to can... you need to DM me these after the fact because yeah. I'm what I'm gonna do is I'll put it in the intro and be like <laughs> world class long jumper does yeah. parkour. And it was it was 2007, man. I was I was dressing dressing differently back then. I got flare trousers Still, on and stuff. Dude, it doesn't even. <laughs> that was that was when like parkour was like first like getting popular too. I think right. Yeah. yeah. How, did I, you, how did you discover? I, when I was when I was like 14, like I was obsessed with it. Like I wanted that to be my life my life thing as well. <laughs> Funnily enough, honestly. So when, seems... uh, how did you get into it when you were eight? How did you even hear about parkour? Did you know someone that did it or what? It was just like weird little videos on YouTube and like just, I've always been a bit of a daredevil anyway. I've always like jumped over stuff and just seen if I can jump over this, jump over stuff. I've always just set no limits on my abilities, like athletically. And like, it, always, it almost like a natural step. And then once I saw the videos coming out on YouTube, I was like, oh, wait. Other people are doing the same thing as me, and it's a thing. Like, and then I just it just took it from there. That's almost like dunking. Like dunking, no one knew it was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you didn't even know it was a thing. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so what what was like the biggest injuries you had in parkour, and then in like uh, long jump? So parkour is always superficial, just scratches. I remember there was um. There's a gap, there's a jack, uh, a drop up here, and I had to try and land down here. And um, I had to vault over this bit, so I put my hands on it. I remember my hands just slipped, and I went face first, looking at this drop, just looking at it, and I just landed in a heap. I um, had a big scrape on both these wrists. My back was mashed up for ages. Um, had to hobble home, get onto the tube, sitting on the central line train, just like crippled. <laughs> just, oh <laughs> my gosh. My arms and stuff, yeah. How far was so the drop? Oh, 
12, probably about 12 foot, probably 12, 13 foot. Um, Because I remember we, it was a walkway, so it's like a subway. So there's the pavement up here. The subway's obviously going underneath the street and the upper wall was there. Um, so, yeah, it must have been, a, yeah, it's a good old height. I remember. And before, after that, there was an even lower drop. So I'm glad I didn't run too fast and overshoot that and end up, yeah, it wouldn't have been a happy you ending there. Been, you would have been splattered. <laughs> really flat a few people down there as well um <laughs> so what uh okay so what was the worst injury you ever saw in parkour and then you can get into your long jump injury oh so oh there's there's so many to choose from um <laughs> i remember seeing a guy attempt to do a flip off the wall and making it halfway around and then landing obviously upside down um, really? Like prop, but like his head tilt, you know, yeah. Did, he, yeah, did he break his neck? I don't know how he didn't. He somehow kind of just flopped out of it and kind of stood up again, like he was made out of rubber. But <laughs> it was um, it was a sight to see at the time. I was like, oh no, I think I've just watched someone die. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the way he just went boop, on his head, absolutely up, like he was break dancing almost. I was like, oh, gosh. Um, You're like, yeah, never, never gonna try that one. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> And I was just like, that's, oh, me next. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, so then what? What? Uh, talk about long jump now. What? What was your? No, I know you got hurt your ankle or your foot, right? Talk about like what happened <laughs> with that and how it happened. So with my ankle, that was a, probably stress over a few weeks or a few months. Um, I remember running down, feeling really good. Like this is when training was going very well. Um, I remember running down the track. Every, I felt my ankle a little bit before. And um, I was like a bit tentative, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pepper this runway. I remember ran down. As soon as my foot hit, I heard a pop and it just literally flipped my whole body. I remember landing in the pit upside down and I looked at my ankle and I see it literally visibly just go, just become fat. And I was like, okay, that's not good. Um, and it, it took me two days to go to the A&E still. Um, I thought I was just I, at home icing it, thinking it was absolutely fine. I just sprained it. Turned out I literally chipped off the inside of my ankle and I had to get it screwed back on. Um, wow. So yeah, that's the worst one. That put me out. That, that's why I'm a normal human to this day. <laughs> it's been two years now since then. Um, How and that kind of quit, not quit track, but it was kind of like, a, it was a rough one to come back from. So I thought, you know what, I'm not getting any younger. Let me kind of explore the other side of life now. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was really interesting. Like when I saw your post, I was like, oh wow, like he's, you know, he's, he's done. It seemed like, honestly, from my perspective, I, I felt really bad because obviously like, you know, being an athlete, having a lot of injuries, but never one that that was that serious where it would like, you know, kind of take me out of the sport. I was like, mm. damn, I wonder like how he's doing <laughs> like emotionally. Yeah, was, I, that, was that brutal for you to make that adjustment from like full-time athlete to, you know, oh, a real, real person? Like, absolutely. And I, I've never kind of shied away of letting people know that it was a very, very dark year for me. Like, it went from everything being so good. And I remember at the time I was getting money, I got money from Gymshark. So everything's up here. And the right. gym training's up here. And then you break your ankle and it's like, wee, all the way down. And it's like, I can't even walk to the toilet now. Like, what's, what's going on? Oh. Like, I'm from jumping around to um, being bed bound for the most of, like, two, three months. Um, oh, so it was a yeah, huge huge adjustment and that's you cool. always know the end of the sport is inevitable but when it goes without you kind of having a plan in place or anything in place it's it's a big hole to bring yourself out of i think yeah what did you end up so how did you like financially and with training and stuff like how were you did you get funding from uk athletics like or i guess british athletics before and then like when you got hurt are they like okay you have like six months and then like funding is gone or how does it work so I got taken a funding from British Athletics in 2018. So it was been self-funded since then. So I've just been little odd jobs here and there. Um, still going to championships, still making teams. But um, luckily, uh, luckily, weirdly, they didn't want to hear about it. And so I've kind of been self-sufficient since then. Kind of been the number one long jumper there or thereabouts, but never really had the funding. And for me to get the funding again in 2021 from Gymshark, I had to go fund me at the time. And for it to be from, oh, wait, oh, finally people want to fund me and back me to literally break my ankle. It was a big old drop. Like, it felt like I got dropped out of the sky a little bit. 
Oh, that's brutal. Wow. Holy shit. I just can't, I can't imagine like having that much support because Gymshark's not like a small brand, you know what I mean? Especially when you got funded, like Gymshark, I think now the popularity has maybe dropped a little bit, but like you were Mm. probably at its peak, like 2020, 2021, you know what I mean? It's like when it was popping off, like Mm. everyone on TikTok was wearing Gymshark, Gymshark everywhere. You know what I mean? Like people were repping it like, I don't know, like a badge of honor. Um, Mm. So you know, to have that funding, you did, how long, when you got hurt, what did they tell you? Like, was your contract conditional on you, you competing or can you not disclose that or? So luckily with that, it was literally just, um, they put money in the GoFundMe I had. So there's no real commitment to me and Gymshark so per se, because, um, yeah, it was just a general, um, open page that anyone could donate to. Um, but there were talks of maybe doing a campaign with them, but obviously that kind of fell away when they realized what well, they heard the news that I broke my ankle. <laughs> um so yeah yeah that's brutal yeah. <laughs> so good, good. all right now we'll get we'll get into the the other fun stuff that a lot of people want to hear about which is your training so i think you know for the people listening and and i don't know if you've ever thought about this but i think the reason parkour was probably so effective for you is because like those landing forces are so crazy and you've probably done this like in training you know where you work on eccentric forces and isometric forces like on the landing you know like depth drops or depth jumps and parkour is doing that but on a like to a function of you know well i don't even know how many feet like what was the biggest drop you think you did in parkour oh like landing where you landed on two feet and didn't roll how about that there must have been a 20 foot it was soft grass at the bottom but it was it was a 20 foot and we were looking at it and we're kind of like this is kind of high but i said i can i can match i'm gonna superhero land this i jumped off and kind of just I didn't even know how I do it. It hurts my knees just thinking about it, but I just landed and I was just like, I'm good. And I kind of looked back up. I was like, I'm good. And then we, we just carried on and just look now, I'll just be like, what am I? That is crazy. And I, I didn't even fully like bend, you know, we bend and dissipate all the energy. I kind of just, just like just firmed it. Right. So when you see like, like when you see guys jump off really high heights as a parkour guy <laughs> and you see them like, like the, there's a really popular guy on, on, instagram who does like these high drops and he'll like land like soft from like six feet and then like then go into like a squat or like a reverse nordic or something like that do you see that and you're like what that's not <laughs> like <laughs> like when you see that are you like that's not the same as like a stiff landing <laughs> like, yeah, definitely not and it's it's it works i mean it's good but when you're landing and just you can feel the g-forces in your cheeks and stuff that's when you know you've kind of you've jumped or something high that is crazy. Do you think, do you think that specifically, like when you hit a long jump takeoff, was it like, like, did you get that same sensation or is it like, oh, I could handle so much more. If I could run faster, like I could even hit the board harder. There was, yeah, there was, a, there was a feeling of, cause I've known how far I can push my body. I know that long jump, there was always like a safe medium and that safe medium was mainly to get the technique in and make sure everything's tidy off, off takeoff. Um, but yeah, there was always a time, there's always points where I was like, I could have pushed out a lot harder. I could have stuck my foot out a lot harder. I could have ran in and stuck my leg out all the way out and it, I would have been good. (laughs) Do you think, do you think that that led to a lot of your long jump success? Like being a daredevil in the sense of like attacking your takeoff? Yeah, absolutely. I think the curiosity of it, like when you become good at something and you become curious to how far you can actually take it, like when you because I remember the competition I jumped eight meters 21 I was it started with like eight meters something then 80 and then 819 I think it was and then it was the 821 and each one of those like distances I was kind of looking like how far can I push this how hard can I attack and my leg still stays attached to my body kind of thing <laughs> and yeah that's how the 821 happened I just ran down there I was like if I put this foot down and I ping up I'm I'm gone and that's exactly so- what happened Okay. So when you did that, like you were like running down the runway and you're, you're coming down, like what were your, like, was it putting your foot further out, like putting more force into the, like, just like feeling the pop in the, in the like touchdown of your foot, like what, what sensations and what things did you cue yourself to actually hit those big, big marks? Like if you could go back, put yourself in your shoes and be like, oh, there's like two or three things that determine my Mm -hmm. success in this jump, like sensationally or like internally you're thinking about like, what would those three things be? For me, it always came from the running. So the running was really important. So the running was one. The setup, the first six strides for me were like crucial because they would make or break whether the jump was good or bad, whether I hit the ball or it didn't. Um, and nerves. I mean, suppressing the nerves enough to push yourself to run properly. Like the nerves had an effect on the 
than the other two. So if I was nervous, right. my first thing would be out of you know out of sync, and then my running would be, wouldn't be as upright, and then the takeoff wouldn't be as good. Um, okay. So you needed me, to be like you needed to accelerate smoothly and make sure that you transition tall well, or else like you would be way off on the actual like attack yeah. into the takeoff. And not rush the first six strides because sometimes you can do the first six strides and they'd be very small, but you need them to be open and, and rich, literally grabbing and ripping the ground each time. So when you do stand up, you're already flowing and you're just bouncing. And then once you're bouncing, once you put your foot down, that movement's already going like that. As soon as you put your foot down, the knees are already up and you're... Ah, uh, okay. So it was almost this like, like bouncy run during that, I guess, stride yeah. seven through takeoff, right? Exactly. I just remember okay. and when, have, like clarity when I'm running because if I'm down and I'm I can't really see much but when I'm up and bouncing and I'm just tall I can see exactly where I want to land and as soon as I put my foot down I'm just going to ping and just go straight there. Right. So what what gave you more energy off the takeoff when you hit the takeoff? Was it like the bouncy or the run the or like the the better those six strides were the acceleration or drive was like that determined how if you if you felt like that inner knowing of oh i'm in the right spot at the right time this many strides out at this velocity like i know i'm gonna crush the takeoff like is that more what the sensation was or yeah and then the last bit i used to the penultimate my penultimate step was always a sink so i'd always sink and then set my leg up to ping out of it and i, I know if i sank too low it's going to be a bad jump so just sink a little bit just enough to build the load and then i'll just ping off Right. So, what would it, what would happen if you were too low and if you were too high? And how did how did you actually sink when you would do it? Did you actively like try to squat down on that step? Or, I, yeah. So my penultimate stride would be quite long, so it puts me into a lunge position almost. And so when I do come out of it, I'm just elastic. But sometimes right. if I was on top of the board, I'd feel like I'm trying to take off my tiptoes. So and that never really there's never really that I'll call it a cock back action kind of like a gun. You kind of push it back to so it can spring out again. That's um, crazy. So then, yeah, okay, so that, my question, yeah. like, when you say when you say long, did you take off your left leg or right leg? Right leg, yeah. Right leg, okay. So your touchdown of your left leg before the takeoff, when you were like, would you push into the penultimate step and then touch mm -hmm. down your penultimate step and then kick out? Or is it like you just kind of were reaching out with the left leg? Uh, or sorry, the, uh, sorry, reaching out with your, yeah, your left leg, reaching out with the left leg. I would reach out more with my right leg out of it. So my left leg would go down, then the right leg would kind of extend itself out to the board and kind of, you know, it would right, be like, right. a, like a, basically like a pole vault almost. So you're, you would almost like stride into the takeoff. Mm, yeah. And that's how I got my load. Right. So if, you, if that stride was too short, that's when you felt like, oh, I'm like, like off my toe or whatever else. And if it was too long, you felt like, oh, my knee's going to explode. <laughs> into the back row yeah literally <laughs> <laughs> so the length of that last stride is more of like what gave you the lowering and stuff like that you would say or did you actively have to lower down on that left it was just a natural thing at the time they tried to like my coaches tried to pull it back towards the end because it it was dangerous like because i knew i could get out almost any hole through just absolutely lunging into the board <laughs> and it was strength, oh, like, no. strength to have so um, we kind of toned that back in at, <laughs> towards the end of my career. But, um, so, so would you tell yourself like, okay, keep your hips a little higher, like into the takeoff and don't step out as far, basically? Exactly. And that came from the running. If my knees were high in my running, I knew my hips were high. And then, yeah, it all took place from there. But okay. if I'm running it, just, you know, just muscling it, knees, knees low, arms, just absolutely ugly running. Would you over lower and just blow through it or what would happen? Sometimes I wouldn't come out of it. And it would be an absolutely terrible jump. Sometimes I'd come out of it and just go straight up and jump like five meters. Um, <laughs> so if your trajectory, if that takeoff angle was too brutal on the lower, yeah. you would just you just pop that, straight up. Yeah, all that forward energy would just get pinged straight up into the sky because my leg was just stuck two meters out away from my body. That's crazy. <laughs> did you did you think about anything prior to the takeoff, like two, three steps out, or even like so like one thing I always struggled with was like the distance of those last two strides. So for example, like if this is my takeoff leg here, my penultimate step lands here, right? So this would be your right, this is your left penultimate step. The stride before that penultimate step, the pre-penultimate yeah. step, did you have to do mm -hmm. anything like lower on that step or push out on that step? Or was it just maintenance until like the right actually touched 
or I guess your uh, your penultimate step touchdown. It probably did lower a little bit, actually. Yeah, I think it probably lowered a little bit. It was never quite something I could feel, but it might it must have because there's no way I'm dropping putting one leg out and it's dropping absolutely. Yeah, right. But like intuitively, intuitively, all you had to do was think about the last stride, basically, right? <laughs> yeah, that's actually really really interesting. Literally, I used to just think, jam my foot as hard as I can into that board and just hope for the best. And it, was, it was a very scary way of thinking. <laughs> but it, used to off. Like, it happened a few times. I was like, oh, I can. this must be sustainable. Um, <laughs> like, <laughs> it obviously wasn't. What were, your, what were your sprint times? Like, Do you know what your actual sprint times were? Um, I ran a 10.85 once. Um, never really dabbled again after that. Um, I remember that's the same PB as uh, Dina Asher Smith, our best female sprinter. So I was kind of like, you know what? Any <laughs> five, that's, that's, you know what's funny is like my best PB is like 11, maybe like low 11s, you know? So like I look <laughs> at that and I'm like, 10 85, dude, you're blazing fast. <laughs> and <then> you're like, <laughs> next to you is like the girl and she's like crushing. You're like, yeah, I don't know why I'm doing this anymore. Been <laughs> <laughs> looking at me like, speed up, bro. Yeah. Did you, um, did you ever run with Jody? Who? Jody, I think her name is. She was, uh, I think, British yeah. Athletic Sprinter, two hundred meter runner. Yeah, yeah, I've been on the same team as her. Yeah, uh, never. Oh, run really? Over. Yeah, yeah. She she was at Altus for a bit. I never met her, but I was just wondering mm-hmm. if you ever trained with her at all or anything like that. No, no, no. Cross was she pass. faster than you? I mean, probably. That's probably. <laughs> After a while, let's start start talking to the female sprinters because I like, oh, she's faster than me. She's probably faster than she. Okay, they're all faster than me. Uh, I'm probably just not going to talk to them anymore. <laughs> yeah. Avoid those. People. That's one way. That's one way to cope with it. With the reality, yes. the stark reality that you're slow. You know, it's like the day that Isaiah beat me in a sprint for the first time. Like I'm a track guy. I come from a track background, right? I like teach Isaiah everything he knows about sprinting. Isaiah, talk. Tell us a little bit about that infamous day where you beat me in the first sprint of uh, your existence. Yeah, the the slightly uphill one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a good day. It was like Isaiah was coming back. It's actually your TFL, I think, at the time was like bothering you, right? No, it was my ankle. I, oh, I your ankle? Jump. I couldn't jump right. at the time, yeah. So Isaiah, I'll give you the background, backstory. Daniel, I'll put you in my shoes, okay? I've been sprinting since I was 13 years old, doing intense plyometrics, training like a track and field athlete for, you know, at this point, 14 years. I think I'm 27 at the time. Isaiah has been spurring for maybe a year or two at this point and i've just consistently beat him and maybe maybe a couple of years he's like done track on and off but pretty much just dunked right you would say for the most part yeah, yeah, okay yeah. so then like isaiah does he comes and stays with me during covid we're training like on this like cement like like outdoor thing for a while and then one day we go to a park it's supposed to be a dunk session we always do our sessions on saturdays i don't know how your jump sessions were but like in competition you probably competed on saturdays right daniel for yeah. the most part or you did isaiah but daniel do you what day do you compete usually on saturdays oh. Last jumps would be during the week. Oh, really? Okay. So this, we usually do the jump days on the weekend. And so Isaiah's like, we're, we're getting ready to like warm up for this. Isaiah's only supposed to do like a couple jumps or maybe not even jump at all. And uh, he's been like lifting his ass off. Like his power clean was, I think, uh, 275 at the time. Was that right, Isaiah? Yeah. What was your best power mm-hmm. clean, Daniel? So I've list- lifted 145 kilograms. So I'm not sure what that is. Holy shit, Isaiah, he tops you. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> that's 319, 320. Yeah. What was your best what was your best half squat or deep squat? Oh. Can't remember off the top. I can find the stats. I can find the videos. So I've got it all. Um, did you did you squat was, did you squat deep or did you just squat to like parallel? It was more mainly parallel, yeah. So it'd be quarter okay. squat, half squat. Never deep, deep. I wonder what you. I wonder. Do you think you did over five hundred pounds? It's likely. I have to did find you do? A, did, you did over two hundred kg easy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. It was <laughs> oh yeah, two, dude. Four forty. That's that's lightweight. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Okay, so yeah, you went over. All right. So, anyways, I say it was pretty strong, but <laughs> so mm. he's like, so we're we're running and like. I, again, I've beaten him. He's been getting close to me, like catching up, but I've consistently been beating him. So we're like, we're sprinting or whatever. Isaiah's like, we're on like one of the last sprints. And Isaiah, like the one before kind of catches me a little bit. It was on, on his start or like it was on his start and he dusted me. That's what it was. So it's my start, like on me, he goes on me. I go 
And Isaiah just takes the fuck off and just blasts me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to, like, I always catch him upright, right? I'm going to catch him when I'm upright. No, Isaiah just gaps me and just keeps grabbing <laughs> me. And I was just like, all right, he's officially faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> Find your hardest and he's just leaving. He's just leaving yeah, you guys. yes. It was almost, it's almost like when you run next to the girl sprinters, Daniel, when you run next yeah. to the <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, they would gap us even worse. Like Isaiah and I would be like, uh, why are we even doing this? <laughs> like, like I have no business being on any track with these sprints. <laughs> um, all right. So, so like your sprint times in the, did you ever get like a fly 10? Did you ever get like a top speed time or anything like that? Like that's that you're asking for that very deep in my memory bank. Um, I, I can dig them out for you, but. Did, yeah, did you I hit? Did, did you ever hit eleven I, meters per second? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember it was eleven point something. One time, I think it was. We had holy the, uh, cow. Everything. Yeah, we had the proper setup. It was a proper testing day, and I remember I was like, "That was the benchmark." I hit it once in my last run, I think. Wow, and, that's crazy. Yeah. Were you Never faster really. than Greg, or no? Oh, probably not. Definitely not on the runway. Um, and he had a quite good sprint speed as well, like sprint time. Probably not. His that would have been a good. That was, yeah, yeah, that would have been a good showdown. Damn it! Another time. <laughs> Another time. Have you ever? Okay, so now that you've been out of the sport for I guess a year or two, like, do you ever have the itch to go back and try something new, or are you kind of just like content doing what you're doing now and like just living life? Do you know what? I do enjoy living life, but every now and then I do. And do you know what I miss the most? It's it's the hard, horrible winter training sessions when you're like running up hills in the pouring rain or like you miss that in the freezing cold. They're the ones I miss the most. <laughs> I don't know why. The other day, and I was just like, "Why is this? I like this." Do you do you miss the camaraderie of just like having a team and stuff like that? Is that something that like yeah. you really like kind of miss the most about it? Because I feel like that was something that for me like. I've always pretty much trained alone. I didn't even get to compete in college because I like hurt my back and then I tore my meniscus and then I mm. had hip issues. So I was always kind of training alone because I couldn't ever follow like what the coach wrote. I just like couldn't do it. I physically was unable to do it. Mm. So I was always like working around stuff and, and trying to like make the most of what I could as far as training. But I always was like envious of people that got to train a big training group because I always felt like that would have been so much fun. Like Isaiah and I have done it once or twice, but like, in our sport, everyone trains alone because it's not as popular as like track and field. Basketball is, but like train to jump higher is it's getting more popular, but it's not like people will train for it two hours a day like we do or something, you know, I guess for us, it's like an hour, hour and a half if we're quick. Depends how, how long we rest. But <laughs> so uh, is that is that one of the aspects that you really miss about it? 100 percent. I think for me, I always compared it to like being in the X-Men because like we're all in this like elite group of people all got our own special talents and we're just trying to be the best that we can be and just especially my last training group I was with um Ben Williams who's another very bouncy person um Zach Zach Skinner who's a para athlete Livy Green who's a para athlete so it's like a massive group of different athletes from totally different sports or same similar events but you know I mean one's right. para we were like able-bodied but it, we all come together and all of the same training groups were the same um, and that's why I really miss like when we had a hard session, we pick each other off the floor. Um, when it came to testing, we're always pushing each other and like trying to jump further than each other, trying to out sprint each other, trying to outlift each other. And I kind of miss that because it's compared to the other time, but I realize it's helping you improve as well. Yeah, I feel like that aspect, like for us, Isaiah always says this, he's like, it's so hard to find people that can push him in the weight room and push him on the track and push him in all these other aspects. Like in plyos, I would push Isaiah, but in sprints, maybe. But like in the weight room, Isaiah is going to obliterate me like he can isaiah's ass grass squat is 405 he could probably he could probably half squat like 250 kg or something like that um his power clean is now 300 and 300 pounds isaiah is that what you're at yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah so like you know someone like you training with him would be insane but you know it's not like we have the luxury of going to like an olympic training site you know what i mean or going to chula vista and being able to you know have uh yes have isaiah train with those guys like that's never gonna you know it's just like it's not gonna happen even though yeah, the training is very similar it's it's not gonna happen so yeah, it's kind of like interesting. a public gym getting getting weird looks from people although last uh one of the last training sessions i had i ran into an elite 400 meter runner 
Yes. Yeah. He I was forgot, like a, he was like a 46 he, guy, 46 second yeah, guy. Yeah. I forgot He's his fat. name, but I literally was, I was training. And then I see this guy doing like rhythm quarter squats with heavy ass weight. And then he went, and then he went off and like did plyos. And I was like, I would bet all my money that this guy, this is a track guy. And then I went up to him and he was like sponsored by Nike and all this stuff. And he was in a, in a random public gym. I love that you can tell that from random public gym, like who are the real athletes and who are not. Like, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, if you got five hundred pounds on the bar doing rhythm quarter squats, odds are you're probably a track and field athlete. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no one else is doing that. <laughs> um, okay, so getting into the training because we we have not even really dove into this, and then on this we'll we'll end on this note or this topic. So tell us like what your annual cycle usually was. Like if you could split it into three or four parts, I guess like gen prep specific prep pre-comp competition like what did your lifts look like in each of those phases um i guess we'll start with like you know your squats and your olies you know at the beginning of the year in gen prep what, what were you mostly doing and then what did it bleed into throughout the year oh, it was all just do you know what the first probably the first month would be refamiliarization so just going through the movements kind of like light cleans light squats um just pr- focusing on technique um that would be around October time for me. So our winter would run from October round to about January. A um, couple months in, so November, December time, the load increases heavily. Like I remember seeing my training program just thinking, well, okay, so we're lifting, lifting. And it's just high intensity, high reps, um, sim- like heavyish weight, but nothing ever too crazy. So it'd be around 190 on a squat or 120 on a 120. On a, Hour clean or happy for me right what um, what was your usual like volumes like in a session during that time was it like that five by five like you know six by four type of stuff or probably five times five yeah or at the start it was like three times eight or something like silly and it would go down into that yeah right and then it would, and then in that. and then your indoor season would run like i mean it basically just ends now it ends like the beginning of march right yeah yeah So you would, so like leading into the beginning of indoor, did you guys start to like, would you guys still hammer the weights until like through outdoor or how did you guys treat that? It would be three sets of three, um, just very explosive. So it'd be quarter squats and hand cleans mainly. um, Mm -hmm. And then lots of exercises in between then. Um, For me, especially I had very weak like adductors. So I'd have to focus on those. Um, I taught taught my adductor before the Rio Olympics actually. So <laughs> I haven't had much, really, much luck with these Olympics, man. So you would, um, you would say you did a lot of accessories, you said, between? Is that what you said? Yeah. Because, okay. like I said, I'm a big, like I'm, I'm a power athlete, but because of that, I need to take care of the small, like the ankle stability. So we did like lots of sand walks, lots of balancing. Um, remember we had, my coach had us standing on one leg, like one arm, like almost yoga out to the side, just getting the ankle stability correct. Um, and just like lots of core and stuff, obviously. Okay. The so then you would kind of like drop off the weights and stuff like that into the indoor like winter season. And then mil- yeah. building into outdoor, did you guys kind of like see a ramp up period again where you would hit it hard in the weight room for a bit, like through yeah. March was, and April and May? Yeah. So it was similar to winter, but just um, not as heavy again because we didn't need to like refamiliarize ourselves. We're quite well versed, quite fit. So we kind of just moved into um, power squats again half squats that's just like that's as low as we would go um full cleans again lots of step ups as well i remember doing loads of step ups just very were you, were you doing high step ups or low step ups like low box so, or high box but towards competition it'd be low and flipping heavy okay. like bar bed stuff. like it was it was <laughs> it was horrible I remember that session. <laughs> when you put the bar back on the just there like you feel like you're gonna pass out yeah literally knee shaky just <laughs> Yeah, I love it. That's I I did a cycle like that once, and I think I got my like step up to, I don't know, it was probably like, I think I had three forty five, like three twenty kg plates or two. I think it was two twenty kg plates, maybe three. I don't remember two or three. You know, so it was like whatever this high, um, you know, probably something like that. I think I did five twenty, and I felt like I set the bar down, and I felt like I was gonna pass out. Like I was like, Honestly. holy shit! I was like, I. How heavy did you go in step ups? Like, what was the heaviest step up you ever did? You think? Oof. 
it would have been around 190 probably towards 200 but yeah it was it was kind of heavy and it was it was not okay to be stepping <laughs> using one leg to be form of weight did you guys the, did you guys do it where you would like pop the box and step up or did you just like set the foot on it stand up step like almost like reps or was it like was, step up two feet two feet down two feet up like how did you do the step ups Again, because I'm curious and stupid, I'd always try and at least do a little pop off at the top. Like I'd step on it and try to really get off the ground. You'd like it. hit the box, like you'd like hammer it and step yeah, up the box and just try and yeah, never That's, did. But it's right, <laughs> right. Like the intent was there. You would try to like try to do that on all your squats. Were they always high intent? Were you trying to like bend the bar or pop it off your back when you're standing up, or was oh, it like? Oh, every time I stepped in the gym, it was maximum aggression. Like oh, time that is. Gym, we, we you oh, can't teach that you can't teach yeah. that. like that's the one time you actually get angry and it and it helps you like <laughs> if you're lifting you've got 145 on the ground and it needs to get to your shoulders you need to get angry because otherwise it's it's not it's not going to move you can't just use muscles you have to use some sort of anger. you have to yeah. have that level of like pissed off focus i don't even know how to describe yeah. it it's it's yeah, like it's a pissed. it's like a violent it's like a it's like a quiet storm it's violent but there's a level of like focus involved like you can't be like like some guys will punch holes through walls, but like you need to have that level of like, like inner pissed off focus. But it's just aggression. It's aggression. What, yeah. what did you call it, Isaiah? Aggression. Yeah, like you just have to be. You have to be. Uh, I, I don't know. People people don't understand that. I try to tell people I'm like get angry, like get pissed off when you lift the weight, like throw the like push through the ground, like you're trying to just throw the bar through the ceiling. Or I tell people on cleans like jump like i want you to jump as hard as you can to pull to get that mm -hmm. bar up to your shoulders and people would be like i just don't understand i'm like i don't know how to teach this <laughs> like, yeah. have you had no trauma in your life <laughs> like, <laughs> Go that place. Train, yeah. you gotta you gotta train like you get beat at home yeah, yeah for real. We, saw, we, we saw a tiktok and it was like what was it isaiah like someone commented he was like yeah like I don't remember who the basketball player was, but he's like, my dad used to make me do like 500 box jumps every time, like before. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. And, and then someone commented, is like, is this abuse? And I'm like, no, that's what makes you better. <laughs> you have to go to a dark place. Um, okay. So then getting into the outdoor season, did you guys like, as you're getting to pre-comp or even like competition, how did your, did you guys drop off like the percentages and just try to move weight super quickly? Or how did you guys adjust at that point at that phase? Yeah exactly that so we've just been moving weights so to two to three reps um three well two to three sets as well and just really try move with intent that's all it was um everything you do even like the boring like core stuff was moving with intent making sure it's full movements making sure everything's flowing properly so you're getting the max out of each session um, got it the main focus is always speed um so i'd really focus on the speeds aspects of things really focus on getting the feet down making sure the movements are correct and stuff like that so that yeah so you mentioned like sprinting and stuff like that you know through the year did you guys progress like long to short or sorry short to long so was it starting at excels and then into the winter it gets faster and longer like into fly tens and stuff like that and like you know yeah. four or i guess like 60s or 90s or whatever and then into the outdoor season it's probably like just a continuation of that or how did you guys progress through the sprint work yeah, so towards the outdoor season, it'd be more like sled pulls, so assisted, like pulleys. Um, oh, like so they're pulling you. As well, yeah, exactly. So wow. Over Did you ever, do you ever run into hamstring issues doing that? Um, Not for me, no, but I it I can see how it would, because if you're not upright again, then you're running the very backside while being pulled. That's your hamstring just coming off, mate. Like, <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Um, but yeah, it, that's a very strict way of getting you into the right form. Um, so for me, it's mainly sled pulls because again, that you can get angry of that. You can really hammer the floor down, and you're not really going to move, but you're you're going to make great shapes and great angles. Right. So when you do, when that does come off, the weight does come off, you can just run freely. So would you guys do sled pulls and then like the sled would come off, or is it like just assisted or both, like a mix of both and all three of them? Um, so it just be mainly sled pulls and then we do non-assisted after this. So it'd be like two or three sets of sled pulls or tire pulls um, and then just to sprints afterwards. So it'd be like 50, 60 meter sprints. Wait, um, and that so, was during competition usually? Um, that was around, no, that was before competition. So just oh, before okay, okay. So the, the like, bit of down between the outdoor and indoor season. Okay. Okay. And then in season, you said you would do towing. Like you guys are like max, max sprinting. Like someone's pulling you forward and you're getting yeah. like over speed. It was absolutely terrifying. Yeah, I've, I've done it probably 
three, four times. And it was, yeah, it was very Oh, crazy. that's crazy. Okay. So then in the fall, or I guess like, you know, like that October, kind, kind of like uh, September, October, November, leading into indoor, are you mostly doing like what you were doing, what you're doing after indoor, like the sled pulls, like accelerations, you know, building out the sprint distance more or less? Yeah, bring it, building up the sprint distance and a lot more plyos as well. Um, the plyos kind of grew in, shortened in um, reps and stuff, but they kind of, in terms of intensity, they were quite intense. Um, so the boxes would be higher, the distances would be bigger, so the bounds would be like 30 meters rather than 20, and they'd be back that's, to back. That's well. in the winter. You're saying like leading into indoor, that's what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. So your plyo volume was the highest and your plyo volume was the highest in the like fall slash winter, you would say? In the, yeah, leading up until well around January time. Okay. So yeah. during that time, are you doing like, are you doing depth jumps? You're doing single leg hops. You're doing that sort of stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Basically in circuit form as well. So it would be a lot. Um, remember we did like single leg bounds followed by, um, oh my gosh, my brain's gone back. Followed by bunny jumps, followed by burpees. Like that would be like part of a circuit. Um, we'd have, and you would, we'd have that would be max back. intent. Would that be like max intent? Like all of them are as high as you can go, as far as you can go, or was it kind of like paced? Paced, yeah, yeah. Ma max okay. intent is very short lived for me. I think. <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. So then, <laughs> so you're like you're doing stuff for time more or less, but like doing a lot of jumping, and then yeah. would that start to shift towards like no time element, just max intensity, like into the indoor and like outdoor season more or less? Yeah, so I think before the outdoor season or before the indoor season as well, we'd have like a testing phase where that would just be absolutely max out, like sprints max out, weight room max out. Um, the plyos just absolutely try to kill yourself off. And then it will kind of tail down again and then we'll just build up um, the last few tweaks. So for me, again, mainly sprinting and then run up work and then we're good. Okay, so then into outdoor, like that's into indoor, you're saying, like into January, February mm -hmm. more or less? So, like, how did your plyos change as you got into outdoor? Did they much at all, or? So, instead of being um, for distance or height, it would be for just speed. So, my speed bounds, it would go from being step bounds to speed bounds. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried them, but, like, over 25. Yeah, just, like, at, like time it, like, 60 meter, like, as fast as you can, like, 60 meters, like, as quick as you can. As tried as possible. It's, it's honestly so hard, but, yeah, just different intensity like that. So, hops would be a lot quicker um the standing long jump would be like bounds react react like very just aggressive like um, multi like like repeat hops like double leg as fast yeah, as you can yeah. so exactly. you're not you're not necessarily focused on height it's more like distance and speed exactly getting out of that hole the hole i like to put myself in just getting out of that as quick as possible on every activity okay okay so when did you do like like hurdle hops and stuff like that um oh yeah that was obviously a mass, massive part of it that was my favorite part of it actually oh yeah i um, know you used to post them all the time i'm like oh this guy's bouncy <laughs> like... <laughs> um that would be in the winter so that would probably be about two about a month on falcon competition and it would happen okay. every week as well um it was always in the program as well um usually after a disgusting weight session as well just to make sure we're... you would do it at the end you would do it like after squats and stuff like that like to finish yeah. up the session yeah, to finish off the, and just to, I don't know why you've done that, but uh, yeah, it, it helped. It it's sometimes like coaches will do that because they're like, oh, I want you to be able to connect the dots. Like, okay, you've listed all this heavy weight. I don't want to end the session on like this slow thing. Like now I want you, can you still be reactive? Like your nervous system is warmed up. Your muscles are warmed up. Like, can you still bounce like right now? You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you use that and bounce? And I used to do that with med balls a lot. I would, I would have guys like launch <laughs> med balls, like you know, like a 10 pound med ball after a really tough yeah. weight session. It'd only be like, you know, 10 throws, but it's like throw it as far as you can, like do reactive types of med ball throws. I don't, did you guys do a lot of med ball throws or no? Um, not particularly. I remember with my old coach, when we were weather training and stuff, we definitely did um, overhead throws, backward throws. Um, but we had to run after as well. I remember he used to love doing that, make us run a whole football field by throwing the ball as hard as you can, running after it, picking up again throwing it as far as you can and then doing it again backwards throwing it over your head and then yeah like overhead through. back between like forward that's fun yeah dan dan path like greg did quite a bit of those after sessions and stuff like sprint sessions mm -hmm. you know shot throws and stuff like that um it seems like you know the influences of like uh british athletics is kind of you know felt around the world like a lot of a lot of guys like dan 
I, I don't know if it's that like British athletics influenced everyone else or if every like the U.S. guys like Boo, Shex Nader and some of these like U.S. coaches influenced uh, British athletics because I know Dan worked a little bit with them to, at some point or another. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah. it's funny how, how like similar, you know, it, it's like everyone has the ingredients, but, but how you put them together and, and when you take them out and stuff like that is more, I feel like what, what really matters and the clay, you know, having a guy that jumps off 20 foot buildings on the grass stiff, that helps, you know, <laughs> having a guy that's done that is like pretty valuable. <laughs> Not many people uh, make it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but if you make it through the gauntlet, you're going to be good. Yeah. Well, that's, those are all the questions I have. I guess, Isaiah, do you have anything that you wanted to ask him? Uh, no, I don't, I don't have any, any questions at the moment. (laughs) (laughs) And Daniel, do you have any questions for us? Anything that you're like, dude, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, what, like, what is, like, what is this? (laughs) Yeah, this is like a new world to me that I'm, I'm very ready to delve into, but I just want to know, like, what, what, what triggered it? Like, what Uh, triggered the Isaiah for Isaiah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the love of jumping so i would say it's pretty similar to a lot of like track guys like yeah i always love jumping and then basketball is my favorite sport and jumping with basketball is obviously dunking so i was always just like super super drawn into it mm-hmm. um and then when i was around 16 17 it's just realizing that i liked it more than basketball and i don't know it just i started posting it and it just took off from there like i never had the goal of uh like having it be my job or anything like that it was just i loved it and, and now here we are that's cool the other that's part the of best it is like the, the other part of it is it's fun like it's so much fun I, have you ever tried to like get on a low hoop and like like uh i don't know if that's a thing in like in in Brit, like where you're from not, but when i do see a hoop i'm like yeah this is this is my type of fun and it's it's i don't know it's, it's almost empowering as well knowing that you can you can smash a ball through a hoop and then also do a trick and like, yeah, it's, it's fucking, it's cool, man. I need to get into it. I think. I, I like, think, I actually think you'd enjoy it a lot because uh, the training is very similar like to <laughs> what you do for track and field, but you don't have to like, I mean, you can do those workouts out in the cold if you want, but like you don't have to, you know what I mean? There's so many ways that you can get better at it. I mean, I'm sure the same thing's true in long jump. You know, you've probably done a lot of different types of programs, but um, <laughs> yeah, it is, it is fun. And I, I think it's like, it's cool when guys make that transition. I don't know if you know Will Williams. Um, he's like a pretty good friend of mine. We've known each other for a while since he was at AM. Uh, I think he got third actually at USA's. Uh, or mm. I think it was USA's he got third. Um, you know, he's I think he jumped eight nineteen this year and, and PB'd. So, you know, he's uh super, super talented. And uh, you know, he he loves dunking, like has so much fun doing it. And the guy, um, the guy from FSU, he's like jumping 834 right now. I think it's Jer- Jeremiah Davis, I think. Same yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. He's he's yeah. loves it. Like he he like enjoys it a ton. And it's it's fun, you know, it's a ton of fun. Like it's something that you can do where it, you're doing it because you like it and you don't need a team, you don't need, you know, a coach in person. It's like you, you still get to train, you still get to work out and exercise, but you're doing it with a purpose. You know, it's like, okay, I can still lift heavy weights, I can still sprint i get to do all the fun stuff i like to do with a goal in mind but i don't have the pressure of competing on a world stage or if i miss a workout it's, the, it's not the end of the world you know what i mean there's no that pressure is kind of out of the situation and the yeah. competition is like you versus you it's not like you're competing against like you know you can if you want to have that mindset mm-hmm. but like otherwise it's just like oh i really want to do like a between the legs like i want to jump up and like put the ball between my legs and dunk it it's like That's why funny. it's like d- just because i want to yeah <laughs> You can kind of make up your own rules. There's no rules. Yeah, set. there are no there are no rules. The only rules are like there are no rules actually. If you want to do it on a trampoline, you'll probably still get respect from the community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, thank you, Daniel. We really appreciate you you coming on. It was a uh, it was great getting to like pick your brain and and get to talk to you about some of the stuff that I don't know if you've talked about like publicly on a podcast or anything like that. Not so cool. well, yeah, that exclusive. I don't lie. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, where what's your Instagram? Where can people find you if you do decide to start posting? I don't know. You've been away from keyboard, but what is your Instagram handle? Um, it's at dbrams underscore lj. Um, come there if you want to see absolutely nothing. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Living life. Um, Living. Well, we appreciate it, dude. Make sure you send me all of the uh, parkour videos. Oh gosh, I'll dig them out. <laughs> As always, all guys, right. make sure that you like, comment, subscribe. 
Um, give me a follow, whatever else. We are continuing to post more content. I've recently upped my my content game, as you guys have noticed. We've got a better camera, got a better mic. Um, going to try to convince Isaiah to do the same thing. Uh, but that being said, guys, we'll catch you next time on the next episode. Peace out. All right, I will stop this.